Hi guys and welcome to my crochet channel. My name is Hannah Lina and this is my very first YouTube video. Today I wanted to show you how to create this cowl neckline hasha top because so many of you asked for like a tutorial or a pattern after I posted a video of it on my Instagram. So here we are. This piece is made to measure, so all of you can try it, but I will be giving you all my measurements, details, numbers, etc. for a little bit of guidance. So, let's start crocheting! So, for this tutorial you would need some yarn. Here I'm using the Schachermeyer Catania in the color 241 Sea Green, which is a 100% cotton fine weight yarn with a yardage of 125 meters or 137 yards per 50 grams. I ended up only using two skeins, so about 100 grams for my size. You would also need a crochet hook that fits your yarn weight. I'm using a 3mm crochet hook this time. You also need a tape measure, some scissors, and a few stitch markers. I did two versions of this top. One is made with a fine weight yarn, the same as I'm using in this video, which creates a very lightweight and flowy texture. But this time I'm using a slightly smaller hook as the holes between the stitches are a little bit too wide for my taste. The other one is made with a DK weight yarn, which creates a thicker and heavier piece, but nevertheless also very flowy. So keep that in mind when choosing your yarn, in the end it really depends on your personal preference. This piece is made from top to bottom by creating a chain that fits your shoulder to shoulder measurements. We are then going to create the bust part, which is just a square made of double crochet. For the bottom part we'll start to decrease on both sides to create the tip and we'll then do the edging of the top using a mesh stitch also creates the holes for the straps which will be added at the end. This kind of edging will also make your top very versatile as you can bind your top in so many different ways without having to worry about the hole placement. For this top you have to take two measurements which you can easily do by yourself. Measurement A is measured from shoulder to shoulder. Mine is about 39 centimeters or 15 inches long. If you want your top to be more narrow in the middle, opt for a chain that is a little bit longer or if you want a more wider or straighter neckline, then subtract a centimeter or two. The second measurement is the distance between your collarbone, where the straps of the top would start, to your underbust, which for me is about 24 centimeters, so about 9 to 10 inches. Now that we have everything together, we can start the pattern. Start by doing a slip stitch, tighten it around your hook and then chain an odd number of stitches until you reach your measurement A. In total I did 83 stitches until I reached my shoulder to shoulder measurement of 39 centimeters. We are now going to start with our first row of double crochet. Therefore we want to add one more chain and then we'll start by doing a stacked single crochet into the second chain from the hook. Not in the first one as this is our turning chain. In this first row we are only going to crochet into the back loops. So if you turn your little v's to the side you can see these tiny little bumps and these are the loops we are going to be working into. Put your needle through the second loop and do a simple single crochet. So yarn over and pull your hook through the back loop. We now have two loops on the hook. Then you yarn over and pull through both loops. You have now created a single crochet. When looking at it from the front you can see both of its legs. Insert your hook underneath that left leg Yarn over and pull the yarn through. Yarn over again and finish off your stitch. You have now created a single crochet on top of another single crochet, which is our first stacked single crochet. 
I would recommend to put a stitch marker into the second single crochet so you later on know where your first stitch is. We are now continuing with our second stitch, a double crochet which will repeat until the end of the row. So yarn over and then insert your hook into the back loop, yarn over again and pull through. So now this time you have three loops on the hook, you yarn over again, pull through the first two and then again yarn over and pull through the last two so we've made a double crochet. And this is what you're going to repeat until the very last stitch of this row. So after you've made your last stitch of the first row, you're going to chain one and turn your work. Skipping the chain one you just made, we are now going to make a stacked single crochet, so one single crochet on top of another into the first stitch and then continue with double crochet until the end of the row. Now you just repeat this row until you reach your measurement B. So I just finished my square which is now about 24 centimeters long and I actually did 24 rows of double crochet for this. This took me about two hours in total. And now we're continuing with the bottom part by starting to decrease. So before you turn your work for the first row of decreases, we're now going to chain three at the beginning of every row. And then we'll turn our piece over. The decreases are made by crocheting two individual stitches together while doing a double crochet. So as you'd normally do for a double crochet, you yarn over and then insert your hook into the first stitch. Yarn over and bring that yarn through your first stitch. You now should have three loops on your hook. Now instead of finishing the double crochet, you're going to directly put your needle into the second stitch, yarn over again and bring your yarn to the front. You've now got four loops on your hook. The double crochet is finished by yarning over and pulling the yarn through the first three loops and then yarning over and closing the remaining two loops. You've made your first decrease which you should mark with your stitch marker. Now we have to change things up a little bit. As my first top only contained of rows of 62 and not 83 double crochets, it was fine to only make one decrease at the beginning and at the end. So for everyone that has a beginning chain of 65 and under can continue with normal double crochets after this first decrease and crochet until there are two stitches left in a row to end with another decrease. All of you that made more chains than 65, you're going to decrease four times per row. So two decreases at the beginning and two at the end of the row. Otherwise your top will end somewhere between your legs and that's not the look we're going for today. Okay, so now that we got one, two, three, four stitches left on this road, I would now do my decreases again. For those of you with 65 or less, of course, you would do two normal double crochets in the next two and then decrease in the last two. But we're going to make two decreases, so two de double crochet together. So yarn over going into the fourth last stitch, pull through, then going into the third last stitch, pull through, yarn over. Now one, two, three, four as before. We're going to yarn over and pull through those 
three and then yarn over and pull through two. So we have our first of the two crochet together, yarn over again and do like a second crochet together. So through the second last, through the last stitch, four loops on the needle, yarn over, pull through three of them, yarn over, pull through the last. Before we continue with the second row, this is where you should mark the corner where your straight edge ends and you decrease the start as we're going to put the increases of the mesh stitch in there. Here I'm already on row three, so <laughs> don't be confused if yours looks different. And remember not only to mark the right side, but the left side as well. From now on, you're going to repeat these decreases like we did with the square. So you start by chaining three and turning your work, and then you start and finish your row with the decreases according to your number of starting chains. So either one or two on every beginning and end of every row. And also don't forget to mark your first decrease stitch so you don't skip any. Keep doing these rows until your rows get smaller and smaller and you start seeing a tip forming. I've now got to nine stitches left on the row and since I'm decreasing four stitches per row that would leave me with five double crochets in the next row. Our goal is to decrease until we have three double crochets left. So all of you that only do one decrease at every end in the beginning, you would automatically end there with your decreases as you started with an odd number of chains and then lose two chains or two the double crochets per row so just do your decreases as before and stop when you've got three double crochets left in the row okay so for all of you that have been decreasing by four like i do um you would normally end on a five double crochet row so i think there's some starting chains that end up on a three double crochet row if my math is correct but don't rely on this please um so you would end up on a five double crochet row so now what we're going to do we're not going to decrease two times at each end and beginning but we're going to do what all the other people have been doing so for the last row we are just going to do one decrease at the start and one decrease at the end to reach our three double crochets Without cutting the yarn, we are immediately starting with the edging. So first one row of single crochets all around the top and then one round of the mesh stitch. So make one chain, then without turning, do one single crochet into the top of the last double crochet you just made. We're then going to create a corner, so chain one more and try to make this chain as loose as possible because otherwise it's way too tight to crochet into in the second round. And then to end the corner stitch, we are putting one more single crochet in the same stitch as the one before. Mark your corner by popping a stitch marker in there. So now continuing with our sides. The last single crochet of the corner stitch is also the first stitch of this left side. So you're now going to put three single crochets into every row of double crochets. So for this last row, we only have to put two more in there. And since there are no obvious stitches we could work in, Try to just put your stitches in any loops or holes you can find on the way.
In order to create a top that looks somewhat identical on both sides, count the rows of decreases you made. So from where I put my stitch marker to the tip of the top. For me that's 21 rows times 3, so 63 single crochets from the tip to where your straight edge starts. After you finish the first decrease side, we are now going to create a corner. So again, put one single crochet, a loose chain and another single crochet into that corner and mark the chain with a stitch marker. Now instead of the three single crochet in each row, we are now only doing two single crochet for the straight edge. So for this first row of the straight edge, we only need one more in this row. Then again, doing the math for the straight side, I did 24 rows of double crochet. So times two means 48 single crochets until the top corner of the top. As before, we are going to make our last single crochet of this side, which then will be the first stitch of the corner. So again, chain one and make one more single crochet in that same stitch. Again, don't forget to put the stitch marker in and we'll continue with the neckline. And since I made a starting chain of 83, I will now single crochet in all of these stitches. So 82 more to go. And since we worked into the back loops of the starting chain, we have this super neat edge. You can now also weave in your ends as you crochet along the neckline of the top. And then I'll meet you at the other corner. Now, from here on, you just mirror everything you have done on the other side of your top, starting with your corner stitch. So one single crochet, one chain and another single crochet into the same stitch. And this corner works as both your ending and your beginning of the side rows. And then you put two single crochet into each row of double crochet along your straight edge. Then put a corner stitch where your straight edge and the decrease side meet and you continue with the same amount of three single crochet packs until you reach your bottom corner. To add in the first round of edging, do one last corner stitch and put one more single crochet on top of that middle double crochet. Then slip stitch into the single crochet in front of the chain stitch marker. And then again slip stitch a second time into the chain space. So now we have the right starting point. And then you'll chain four. The first Three chains work as a double crochet and the last chain is our connecting chain of the mesh stitch. Again, we are doing corners, so put a double crochet right into that chain. From there on, chain one, skip one stitch and then put another double crochet into the next stitch. And then you repeat this pattern until you reach your next stitch marker, where we then will do another increased corner stitch. Since we have an irregular number of stitches around the top, 
Your stitch markers won't sit perfectly to always put a corner increase after you skip you just one stitch. So it could work out for some corners and for some it doesn't. If that's the case, just skip two stitches as long as you put the corner increase where your stitch marker is. Again, follow this pattern of chain one, skip one, double crochet along the sides of the top until you created all six corner stitches. Now you chain one more time and then you slip stitch into the third chain which is the top of our fake double crochet and then you can fasten off your work, cut the yarn and weave in your ends. Okay, so lastly we need some straps. These will be attached on the right and left corner of your top right into that corner increase. So grab your yarn, leave a long tail and do a slip knot. And then you create a chain that easily fits around your upper bust, but still leave a little tail on both sides. I did about 200 chains in total. Now, to attach that chain to your top, leave the hook in your last chain and then insert the hook into the space of the corner stitch. Yarn over and do a slip stitch so that you've just created a new chain around that corner stitch. This kind of chain also works as a turning chain, which means we are now doing the next stitch into that second loop from the hook. Again, you only want to work into the back loops and since we're going for that cute eye cord look, you would now slip stitch into every chain until you reach your beginning again. There you can cut your yarn and pull both loose ends through the last loop. Pull to secure and do the same thing for the other strap. So if you want, you could add little beads, pearls and other cute charms to your strap ends and make them even cuter. Also added some tassels, this way I don't really have to tie in any ends and you just put a knot at the end and you're good to go. This top also allows for so many different strap variations. Simply grab your straps and then pull them through the side increases. You can then thread them through any other holes wherever you like it. On top you could also try some shorter straps at the top so they would just be tied behind your neck and then create a third strap for the back. Just be creative and style your top however you like. Okay, you guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching my video and I would kindly ask you to give me some feedback since this is the first tutorial I ever put out there. And also don't shy away from asking any questions in the comments. I'll be answering them below um, if you don't get a certain step or if you struggle to continue with the piece. I also link all of my other social media, so if you want to crochet this top, please do tag me. I would love to see all your recreations and maybe I see you soon. Bye!